Come to a comfortable cross-legged position seated on the floor. You can fold a blanket underneath your seat for extra support to lift your lower back and spine tall. Place your hands in prayer in front of your heart and close your eyes. Take a breath in through your nose. Feel your lower belly expand out as you inhale. And exhale, empty out from the chest to your rib cage to your belly. Again, inhale, breathing in. Exhale, out. Inhale like you're filling a glass of water, filling into the lower belly, into the rib cage, and into the chest. And as you exhale, emptying from the top all the way down. With each breath that you take, nourishing into your pelvic region, feeling the lower belly supported, With each exhale, just starting to connect more to your inner space. Noticing how your energy is shifting into a more relaxed place with each inhale and exhale out. Take five breaths on your own. On your next exhale, let your eyes open up. Inhale your arms up overhead. Exhale, pull your hands down to your heart. Inhale, reach the arms out and around and up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Three more times here. Let your arms be an extension of the breath as you inhale, finding more length and extension. As you exhale, as you release the breath, the arms release down. So think of the arms as an expansion of your lungs. Inhale, expanding out and up, and exhale and releasing down. Last breath. Inhale, arms come out and around and up. Separate your hands shoulder distance apart, palms facing one another. Exhale, side bend to your right. Place your right fingertips out and down. Inhale, lift through the left side. Exhale, side bend over to your right. Bending your right elbow back, look underneath your left arm. Two breaths here, inhale. Exhale, as you inhale, breathe into the left side of the rib cage, into the left side of your belly, and into your hip crease. Just start to notice as we tune into our body and breath, how your belly feels today. Inhale, bring both arms up overhead. Exhale to the other side. Root down through the right hip, as you lift up and over with your right arm. Notice any tension through the right hip crease or right side of your body. Always aware of what's happening in your pelvic region and lower belly. Letting your focus come back to how you feel and never feeling like you're pushing too far or straining. All of these poses are there to support you, 
to bring energy and release to any symptoms you may be having. Inhale, bring both arms up overhead. Exhale, folding forward, letting the hands rest down and releasing the head from here. Round yourself up to sit. Transition onto your hands and knees by moving your blanket off to the side. You can always use your blanket under your knees for more support. As you inhale, arch your spine by dropping your belly, turning your sit bones, your seat up and opening your chest. Let's exhale once out of the mouth. That breath that you hear is called ujjayi breathing. Inhale, seat up, chest open. Exhale out of the mouth, creating an ocean or a whisper sound as you exhale out. Inhale through the nose. As you exhale, exhale out of your nose as you round the spine, but still try to hear the sound of your breath resonating through the midbrain. Continue on your own for three more breaths, working to initiate the ujjayi breath, the victorious breath, using the throat as you inhale and exhale. This technique not only heats the breath, it allows you to find a meditative focus, and it helps you to notice when you may be straining or holding the breath. Don't worry about whether it's working or not, if this feels like too much, you can always just let the technique go and work to lengthen your breath in and out. On your next exhale, press your seat back to your heels, coming into child's pose. Let your forehead release down. Inhale, come back onto the hands and knees. Walk your hands towards the front of the mat Take your knees as far back as you can. Again, you can move the blanket or just move it to the side if it's not needed. Allow your chest to release towards the mat. Bring your forehead to touch down and your elbows can either stay lifted for more opening in the shoulder if, or they can rest down to the mat. Bring your awareness to your belly again and actually push the belly just slightly out, feeling that area expand. And then as you exhale, slightly engage the belly in. Try to find a place where you're not gripping, but you feel that your lower belly relaxes in as you hold this pose. Ideally and eventually, the more we practice, the more we become aware of our core and we're able to engage up through the inner thighs to the pelvic floor and into the core of the body without creating tension. Depending where you are in your body, in your symptoms, and in your yoga practice, always being aware of not causing more tension by trying to engage into your core. On your next inhale, walk your hands underneath your shoulders, pressing yourself back up onto your hands and knees. From here, take your hands forward just a few inches. A few more. Tuck your toes. Imagine there's a string attached to your seat so that your seat leads you up and back into down dog. Down dog is an upside down V pose, which not only works to open the shoulders, but the legs and lengthen the spine and torso. It also has the effects of an inversion, so it allows your head to drop, which brings the relaxation response into your body a little bit more. We'll take a few breaths here, trying to take maybe just one more exhale out of your mouth to release the breath, hearing the throat of your breath. And then in inhale through the nose. Exhale out of the nose. Make sure that your shoulders are not rounding forward or that you feel all of your weight in your arms. Bend your knees, tilt your seat up, and press your hips back to move the weight out of your shoulders by using the legs and stretching through the back of the legs. 
One more breath here, inhale. Exhale out. Drop down onto your knees and your choice, either puppy dog with the arms extending out in front of you, or if you're comfortable bringing your seat back, coming into child's pose. Knees can be apart or together in child's pose. You can also use a block under your forehead for more support. Child's pose is a great pose to come into when you're feeling any spasms happening in your lower belly as the gentle massage and pressure of the belly against the thighs helps to release the lower belly. Take a few breaths here, not just into your belly, but also into the back of the body. And as you exhale, envision yourself melting a little closer towards the mat. One more breath in and exhale out. On your next inhale, come back onto your hands and knees. Take the block out of the way and step your right foot forward between your hands. Either keeping your hands on the mat, on blocks, or on top of your thighs. Lean back just a little bit, scoop your seat under, lifting the front of your pelvis up, finding a little lift in the lower belly to support you. Staying here, or starting to bring your arms up overhead. This is a big stretch, not only for your hip flexors, but also for your lower belly. If you feel like this is too much, you can keep your hands on your thigh or onto the mat. Start to notice what feels best for you, and the more you practice, the more you'll be able to explore. Bring your right knee to meet your left. Left foot between your hands. Staying here, releasing your hips forward. And then start to build your lunge by bringing your hands to the top of your thigh. Again, this pose stretches through the thigh muscle, the hip flexors, and the lower belly. Find your level of comfortability by pulling your hips back for less of a stretch or letting them release forward to feel more of a stretch in that right hip crease. Inhale, take your arms up overhead. And exhale here. Three breaths, inhale. Exhale out. Inhale. Exhale. Last breath, lifting out of your waist. Exhale your hands down to the mat. And let's go ahead and tuck your back toes and step forward to the front. Fold your head over, bend your knees, and slowly round yourself up to stand. Step open to your right taking a wide stance. Reach your arms out to the side in a T. Try to bring your heels as wide as your wrists. Turn the right toes back and the left toes in. Bend your right knee for warrior two. Vervadrasana two. Lengthen up through the crown of the head. Center your torso over your hips. Inhale, straighten your front leg, draw the energy up through the inner thighs. Exhale, bend your front knee, deepening into your hip creases. Inhale, pull the heels towards one another as you lift the arms. As you exhale, settling into your hips. Two more times, flowing with your breath. Letting this gentle movement up and down help to massage through the legs and the hips. Noticing how you can coordinate the breath with the movement. Left hand to your hip. Straighten your right leg. Tilt your hips back towards your hand. 
and then lengthen over your right leg, extending the right side of the rib cage as your right hand comes to your shin. Micro bend your right knee to lift the kneecap up, preventing you from locking into your knee joint. Rotate the left arm and shoulder up towards the sky, creating two triangles, one between the legs and one between that right arm and right leg. Stacking the right shoulder over the leg, stacking the left shoulder over the right shoulder. Looking up towards your hand or looking down if that's too much for your neck. Use the breath to help deepen you into the pose on the inhale, pressing the back heel, finding the energy of your legs. As you exhale, twisting from the right side of the rib cage towards the sky. Inhale. Exhale out. Inhale. Exhale. Press your left foot down. Inhale, lift up to stand. Turn your feet parallel and exhale to the other side. Left toes turn out, right toes slightly in. Bend your left knee. Reach the arms up. Inhale, straighten the front leg, lifting up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, lift. Exhale out. Following the flow of your breath, Make sure that the breath doesn't get too nasally, but if possible, you're still finding the ujjayi breath through the back of the throat. Last time. Exhale. Right hand to your hip. Straighten the left leg. Pull forward as you release your hips back, lengthening into trikonasana, triangle pose. Stacking your shoulders, reach the right arm up into the air, making sure there's some energy up through the left kneecap to the thigh. And then using the breath on the inhale to lengthen and extend. Exhale, twist open a little bit more. Rotating the rib cage towards the ceiling as you exhale out. Two more breaths. On your next exhale, bend your front knee. Bring your hands down to the mat. And this time, let's go ahead and step back into downward facing dog from there. Drop down onto your knees. Take a rest in child's pose from here. From here, we're gonna to come to stand. So coming to round yourself up, coming onto the hands and knees. You can lift into down dog and walk your feet to your hands. Slowly rounding your spine up to stand. Keep a slight bend in your knees to help release the lower back. Eagle pose, a balancing pose is what helps to balance the body and the mind. Bend both knees, hands to your hips. Start to lift your right heel. Take the right knee up towards your chest as your seat tilts back and down. Cross your right leg over your left. Touch your right toes to the block or maybe bring that right foot to tuck behind the left calf. Reach your arms forward in front of you. Cross your right elbow underneath your left and bring the palms to touch. Inhale. As you exhale, sit back as you hug your midline allowing the shoulder blades to engage, to lift the chest, allowing the thighs to press, to hug into your core. One more breath here, inhale. 
As you exhale, let's lift up and out. Other side, hands to your hips. Bend both knees, lift up your left heel. Cross the left thigh over the right. Let the toes touch or behind. Reach the arms forward and left arm underneath the right. Balancing poses are different every day. Just as how we feel changes, our focus also changes. So balancing poses are a great way just to notice how you feel both in body and mind. Next pose, Ardha Shandrasana. This pose can also be done at the wall. Place your block in your right hand and step open to the side. Turn your toes towards the back of your mat, left hand to your hip. Good. Bend your right knee. Place the block to the outside of your foot. And as you walk your back foot in, start to inch the block forward. Lift your left leg up into the air. Your block is directly below your shoulder. Rotate the left hip eventually to stack on top of the right. Notice if your right thigh starts to collapse or roll in. You may have to keep your left hip a little closed in order to maintain the lift and strength of your right standing leg. Another balancing pose, you may notice a little bit of movement from side to side. Try not to tighten around the, the balance. Instead, go with the flow, allowing your breath to be steady as you focus to find the micro movements that will help you to find the strength that is needed to sustain. Exhale your left hand to your hip. Bend your right knee. Step back with the left foot. And inhale, take the block with you as you switch sides. Exhale over to the left. Bend your left knee, right hand to your hip. Lift the right leg up into the air. Toes pointing out to the side. Eventually lifting that right arm up, possibly looking up towards the hand. This is a great pose for opening up all areas of the pelvic region, from the pelvic floor to the hip creases and into the lower back. Two more breaths holding. And then exhale, bring your right hand to your hip and this time step your right foot next to the left. For more support, you can use the wall for Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon Pose. Bring your right foot parallel to the wall and the block up out in front of you. Lift your left leg into the air as you lean your right hip against the wall for support. Reach the left arm up into the air bringing the left arm in line with the right. Working in the pose to lift that right kneecap up, lifting the right thigh muscle towards the hip. Breathing here for three breaths. Inhale, exhale out. Inhale, exhale out. Inhale. Exhale out. Slowly bend the right knee and come out of the pose. Switching sides. Block comes to the wall, left foot parallel to the wall. Lean your left hip to touch the wall. Take your right leg up into the air. Rotate the right hip over the left and reach your right arm up towards the sky. Three breaths here, inhale, exhale out, inhale, exhale out, inhale, 
exhale out. Bend the left knee and start to come out of the pose. Both hands to your hips. Let's bend the knees. Come to start to sit down into a squat from here. Bring your hands to the mat and lower your seat down. Hands to your knees. Round your spine down to the floor, coming to lay on your back. You can place a block between your thighs if you have one. Energizing the inner thighs so that you use the core rather than the lower back to lift you. Palms facing down. On your next inhale, lift your hips up into the air, rolling all the way up the spine. Exhale and lower down from here. Again, your movement is an extension of the breath, trying to sink the breath and the movement, taking the whole inhale to lift up, and the whole exhale to lower the spine back down. One more time, inhale and lift up. Exhale and down from here. Inhale, lift up. This time, wiggle the shoulders underneath you, intertwine your fingers or use a strap to hold onto. Take a breath here, squeezing the block or, or keeping your weight even in your feet using your inner thighs. And then exhale, we'll lower down, releasing the hands from there. Take the block out with your left hand, placing it to the side. Bring your right knee in towards your chest. Exhale, let the belly release as the knee comes in. Bring your right hand to hold the right ankle, maybe up towards the outer edge of your foot and then draw the right knee towards your armpit. Breathing here, inhale. Exhale out. Releasing any tension or holding in the lower back or lower belly area. One more breath. Release the right foot next to the left. Left knee into the chest. Left hand reaches towards the ankle. Again, the knee comes out towards the armpit. Releasing the lower back and hip creases. From here, one more breath, inhale. Exhale out. Let's bring the right leg in to meet the left, taking happy baby pose. You can rock a little from side to side to massage the lower back. If this feels like too much, you can release the legs at any time or come back to just holding one. From here, as you exhale, let your knees come into your chest. Drop your knees over to your right for a twist. It's helpful to shift your hips back towards the center of the mat so that the bottom hip is in line with the crown of the head, evening out through your spine. Use your breath to twist more as you inhale Breathing into the chest, reaching out through the arms. As you exhale, soften the shoulders and maybe the elbows a little as you look over that left shoulder. If this feels like too much on any of your symptoms or on your belly, you can always slide the top knee off of the bottom, resting it more on the inside releasing some of the pressure in the lower belly.
Let's bring the knees back to center and over to the other side from there. Same thing here. If your right shoulder is not touching the mat, it may be helpful to bend the right elbow to drop the shoulder towards the mat a little more. Find whatever leg position feels good for your belly and your lower back. And try not to push yourself deeper into the twist, but really think of the breath as massaging your internal organs with every inhale bringing new blood flow, new energy to your belly, and with every exhale, releasing any holding or any toxins. On your next inhale, let's come back to center. Exhale your knees into your chest. Take your feet together and your knees open. And rest your heels towards the mat. If this is too much on the hips, you can place blocks underneath your knees. This is a more restorative Baddha Konasana. You can choose to stay here for five breaths or to roll to your side, coming up to sit. And finding Baddha Konasana bound angle pose here. Bringing the bottoms of the feet together, the knees open. This pose is wonderful for creating blood flow in the pelvic region and for opening the hips. Placing your head on a block, or two even if you need, or just allowing your spine to round and rest. Five breaths here on your own. Slowly round yourself up to sit. And you will come to the wall for shoulder stand. Come to sit with your left side towards the wall. Start to turn your legs towards the wall, laying your back down onto the mat as you inch your hips closer to the crease of the wall. You may be able to move your seat right up to the wall. If that rounds or lifts your lower back, then inch yourself away from the wall at least six inches. This right here is a position that you can rest in if shoulder stand is not for you. From here, bend your knees, bring your feet onto the wall. Press your feet into the wall as you lift your hips up into the air. Roll up halfway, see how that feels on your neck and shoulders. And if you feel comfortable lifting up higher, let the hips lift up higher into the air as you walk your feet up the wall. Bring your hands to your lower back, fingers pointing up, and wrap your elbows underneath you. Lift your chin just slightly, making sure that the natural curve of your neck is maintained. Hold here, breathing with ujjayi breathing or just deepening your breath. Shoulder stand is a very, very beneficial pose, not only for your digestive system, but for going upside down. It is great for the thyroid. It's great for regenerating and rejuvenating the organs and bringing fresh blood flow to your intestines. It is also a great pose for calming your mind. Take five breaths here.
After your fifth exhale, lower your hips down. Let the legs slide up the wall. And just observe how you feel from that inversion. Bend your knees into your chest, roll over onto your side, and slowly round yourself up to, to sit. We will come into our final pose, Shavasana, our final resting pose. It is most important at the end of any yoga practice to allow yourself to lay and rest. You can support yourself under the knees with a bolster or a blanket, or you may be comfortable just laying on your back. Let your arms come out to the side. Let your palms face up. Coming back to your breath, take an inhale into your chest and just exhale out. In Shavasana, we're not controlling our breath, but we're actually just an active observer, allowing our mind to stay focused in our body, witnessing how we feel, but not shifting or changing our breath or body. Take five minutes here, allowing your body to relax, rejuvenate, and rest.
allow yourself to bring your hands on top of your heart. Taking a moment to honor the light within you and bowing to the light within everything around. Namaste.